was a lot of pass and moves. I thought there were signs sort of encouraging sort of back end of the first half. I thought they were they were caught quite cold at the start. But yeah, I thought that East Diff is a bit more of a high pressing game as well. And I think within time it, it'll come good. And yeah, disappointing to lose at Sheffield. I thought disappointing to lose, but I thought the played well. I thought she had a lot of passion, a lot of energy, a lot of determination. Second half. And I think if they can get a result against Crystal City on, on Sunday afternoon, that they can go from there, really. Uh, and stats, um, at the start of the week, there was concern over uh, some of the players, the team that Leeds might be out of field, but Janssen mm-hmm. getting back and a, a boost as well. Caleb Ekuban, uh, on the bench uh, as well. Uh, a, a sign that hopefully things might be coming right for, for the new manager. Yeah, very much so. I think what you've got to look at is we've had a lot of players out for a variety of reasons through injuries and suspensions, and it's great to see Caleb back. I thought uh, up until his injury, his second injury, he played a real important part. This side, I thought Janssen and Pennington here yeah, on Saturday were brilliant. I thought they sort of threw everything that Sheffield United did at them, and I thought they held out each other quite well. And what was also vital nice, is Janssen didn't get booked on, on Saturday because that would have been his tenth. Except yellow card, and uh, after the Bristol City game, I think I have all the players back, all being well, with the likes of, of, uh, of Liam Keith coming back and uh, Samuel Saez, which I think is, is the main one as well. So, a lot of reasons to be positive. Yeah, we know we're a little bit further away than the playoffs, but as, as Paul Riley said, there we're playing all the teams around us, and if they can get results against the teams around us, you never know where it might take it. As you say there, um, you know, uh, playoffs is uh, still the, the target. How realistic is that, do you think, Stats? I think it's difficult. Uh, I think some of the results did go for Leeds on on Saturday afternoon, but they've just got to take one game at a time. There's no point sort of second guessing in the league because you, you look at some of the results are crazy this weekend. Who'd have thought Sunderland three 0 down at half time with some of the fans walking out would have come back and and got a point at Bristol City against a very good side. So it's it's never over until it's over. It, you've got to keep going as mathematically as possible, and it just takes a couple of wins and, and suddenly you're back up there. Uh, next few games still looking pretty tough it's uh, home against uh, Bristol City uh, on uh, Sunday the 18th then it's away at Derby on uh, Wednesday the 21st then uh, back at home against Brentford on the, on the 24th uh, you know I would have thought you know Paul Heckenbob's probably got a target out of those three games you'd imagine yeah we've got a very good record against Bristol City they've not won at Illinois since 1979 so hopefully we can keep that continuing look Derby's going to be difficult we know that they're flying at the moment uh, they were held against Norwich on, on Saturday I think Norwich missed a penalty and then scored a penalty right at the end so there's no easy games in the championship as proven with with the weekend results so a question for me is take one game at a time and, and go from there and I think there's a lot of reasons to be positive at the moment mm. from from that run of game stats what, what would you be happy with it's six points from the, from those nine yeah I'd have to say yeah six I think if we can get the results at home to Bristol City and Brentford no, there won't be easy games but Bristol City will be coming with a tail between their legs after the performance on Saturday today. Derby, we very rarely get anything at Derby. I think it's only one win in, in 10 years at Derby County back in August 2015. And then Brentford, again, another difficult opponent, but they're, <coughs> they're slipping a little bit down the league. So if we can win your home games and maybe pick up a point, you'd be very happy with that. But if Paul can target six points from nine, I think they'll be right up there again. And everyone's looking at, at, at the potential of the top six uh, and if Leeds manage to turn around the form and have, have a good run. Yeah. But when you, when you look at it now, uh, can you only see maybe Bristol City being the ones to, to drop out? Everyone yeah, else looking pretty yeah. strong. Yeah, it looks like it at the moment. They obviously, you've got Wolves who are flying at the top at the moment. They've got another one at the weekend. And Aston Villa up there, brilliant result on the second city derby yesterday. But look, it, it, it's all to play for. As I think Adam Forshaw said in his post-match interview, there's, there's 45 points to play for. And until it's mathematically impossible, you've got to keep going. And with all the teams around playing each other, you never know where it might take you to sort of come uh, the last time game of the season against Queen's Park Rangers. What are your uh, thoughts and feelings on Paul Heckingbottom? Uh, first game in charge, uh, you've heard mm-hmm. thoughts on him pre-match, you've heard thoughts from him post-match. What, what are your initial impressions? I'm, I'm quite pleased with the appointment. Uh, I, I think it was the fact that he went in, I'm guessing that he kind of went in and, and had a go at them at, at half-time and you suddenly saw a reaction. And uh, I think from seeing that from the second half, I think that there's, there's reasons to move on and be positive about things. I think... He had a bit of an unlucky hand at bounds this season in the second half of last season, but if Leeds can play the way they did in the second half at Sheffield United and get a result against Bristol City under Paul, I think suddenly the, the emphasis kind of changes. So it's, it's very early days, yeah, but if, if not this season, he's got to be properly back to the transfer window in the summer uh, and hopefully give it a real good go next year. 
uh, and he sort of pretty much explained away uh, how he said that everybody hated Leeds United uh, and that he hated them as well. He pretty much explained yeah. that away, I think. Yeah, a lot of that since the seventies and sixties, since the Don <laughs> Revy days with the Dirty Leeds tag. So that's nothing new. And and look, that that's probably made made for each other. That one of the most hated football clubs I think around, even in my lifetime. So that, that that's nothing new for me. But look, I'm pleased with the appointment. Okay, we got beat on Saturday, but there's certainly reasons to to be uh, improvement, and and hopefully we can get that result against Bristol City on Sunday. Yeah, that was summed up best for me. One of the fans uh, on Twitter about about Paul Eckenbottom and the the hate in Leeds thing. Uh, where he, he pretty much says that uh, everybody hates Leeds, even we hate yeah. Leeds. <laughs> yeah, I did see some of the some of the comments on on uh, on <laughs> social media on Tuesday and Wednesday. But look, that that football, isn't it? Where I think it goes down to the jealousy back in the sixties and seventies, and uh, everyone likes to start with Leeds United. But look, I think eventually it'll come good. It might not be this year, boys, but I'm, I'm certainly positive for the future. That's what I like to hear, stats. Positivity, that's marvellous. Uh, Andrew Dalton, uh, thanks very much for joining us on Proper Sports. No.